Welcome back. I'm heading 410 miles and seven and a half hours north to meet up with Bike at B&B to take part in the Highland Scramble, a tour of Scotland. I was hoping to do it on my Bonneville, so ride up to Scotland. But as you may know, it's in mechanics and it's been there now for 10 days, awaiting one specific part on back order. So for the foreseeable future, I have no bike and I, hand on heart, have no idea when this part will be back in stock for my Bonneville to get back on the road. So I gave Biker B&B in Royal Enfield a very unreasonable request of seeing if at very short notice they could find me a Himalayan. They were down to their last option, just one potential bike that could have been available. And I had almost accepted they wouldn't be able to find me one. So on Monday morning, it's now Wednesday, I contacted a gentleman selling a Royal Enfield Himalayan in white, £4,000, uh, £3,000, sorry, 4,000 miles on the clock with panniers on Facebook Marketplace and I messaged him and the bike was still available. And I really thought I'd be buying this bike to do the trip on, but half an hour after my chat with this gentleman, somehow Biker B&B and Royal Enfield came through for me and they managed to find me a Himalayan that's available. I think it took them a day and a half of solid work. So as we speak, in Edinburgh, somewhere tucked away, there is a Himalayan waiting for me and that's where I'm heading now. So the plan is, drive up to Edinburgh, spend the night in Edinburgh tonight and then tomorrow morning head off to a garage where this Himalayan is waiting for me and at three o'clock meet up with Biker b and and the Highland Scramble to begin the five day tour of Scotland. Because I'm slightly badly organised I thought I'd just leave accommodation booking for tonight in Edinburgh for this morning. So I woke up this morning and I started looking at about 9.30 for accommodation. But I was not to know that accommodation in Edinburgh is as expensive as Monte Carlo. I've never seen anything like it. I put in my search parameters, 100 pounds for the night as a maximum, somewhere in Edinburgh or the surrounding area. Two properties came up. One of them has two and a half out of 10 stars and the other has a rating of five out of 10 stars. I've honestly never seen such a shortage of affordable properties anywhere in my life. Uh, so I started to panic, asked Monica if she could help me and she managed to find me an Airbnb property for I think 70 pounds a night. A shared bathroom, very small but quirky, looks perfectly good. So. At least that isn't too massive an amount, so that's perfectly reasonable. But really, if you want a semi-decent place in Edinburgh, you need to pay about £250 a night from what I've seen. Reasonable priced properties are in ludicrously short supply. But I'll take you with me today up to Scotland. I'll show you the accommodation, grab a coffee in the morning, I think, and then I'll start a new video picking up the Himalayan start of the Highland Scramble. It's very kind of Monica. She made me a complete packed lunch. Pasta bolognese, banana, a couple of chocolate bars and some salad. Perfect. So sweet of her. You know, I was looking at the, the used bike market and I was having a look at bikes within five years old that in my eyes at least have a good retro element to them. Good looking bikes. And you realize not just the impact Royal Enfield have had on the new bike market, but also the impact they've had on the used bike market as well, because all of these Royal Enfields now are filtering through into the used market and they're completely changing the used market. So you can find genuinely desirable bikes for really attainable money. I was finding Himalayans starting. I found one at 1,700 pounds and that's for a five year old Himalayan. Interceptors now, they're below 4,000 pounds. And you realize also on top of that, we start to be slightly creatures of habit because for the past four years now, I've ridden bikes or had my Bonneville with hard panniers. And it's the first bike I've ever had with hard panniers. And this was really essential for me when looking for bikes, looking at the Himalayans because 
now I've had the, the ease of use, the practicality of hard pan is just open, chuck stuff in, take it out, flip it back shut. It's all so easy. I now don't think I could go back to having to roll all of my stuff up and then bungee cord it onto the back of a bike again. I just love having that ease of use of panniers. So I'm delighted that the Himalayan waiting for me up there has panniers. I've entered Scotland, finally saw the sign about 20 minutes ago, although even 20 minutes before that you can start to feel the change. The amount of space, just infinitely more open space, less built up than especially southern England. And the further north and north you get, just turns into beautiful open countryside. And in Scotland especially, the architecture is completely different. The houses don't look anything like the English houses. But it's a huge day. It's now, it's quarter past eight. I've got 55 minutes to get to the Airbnb, which I think is to the east of Edinburgh. So I'll get there, see if there's parking. If not, I'll have to try and find some parking as well. But it's not bad going. I think I'm about on track. Oh, and I'm glad I brought my midgy net and also mosquito spray because even at eight o'clock now, you can see midges everywhere. And on top of that, I just love the sounds of nature all around. I don't know if the, the mic will pick it up, but just birds singing, cows mooing over there. I think they're sheep or goats in the distance there making a huge amount of noise. Just sounds everywhere from animals and thousands, thousands of insects swarming all around me. That's a good result. On the street parking for free, which is brilliant. I've met the owner, got the keys, and she's given me a little tour of the property. It is, I think the dark one just in the middle there. I'll flip the camera in a second because it's such a brilliantly characterful place. It's, it's so unique. I'll start right at the bottom and take you up through the stairway because this is well worth a top or a bottom to top tour. Okay, so come through the big grand door. Through the second door. And then you're met. And then you're met with a beautiful old staircase. Quite brutal concrete architecture here. But you can see the staircase winding all the way up about four flights. And then this is the property here. Just get the second key. Just before I zoom out, you can see the height. Height of the doors, everything is so grand. And 
my room. It's down here on the right. Bathroom just at the end there. And this, this is my little room. Tiny little snug room, but beautifully done. Little snug area here, just next to the window. Looking out onto a little garden and that is such, well, that's exactly what I imagine the Edinburgh buildings to look like exposed brickwork everywhere. Sweet little table area. Look at the wood here for the internal architecture. Beautiful, with a full height window. Turn the light on if I can. I think the owner must be an artist because there's artwork everywhere. And then an area below the bed and to make the most use of space, the bed is all the way up there, right near the ceiling with a, a painted pink staircase. It's fantastic and beautiful exposed wooden flooring. biking trip around Scotland and she said get ready for one of the most magical experiences you'll ever have had because there's a mystique to Scotland and it doesn't matter if it's beautiful sunshine or pouring rain or just misty and gloomy it's a magical place regardless of the weather and if this property is anything to go by it feels like the adventure has just begun cannot wait for tomorrow I'll end the vlog there and start a brand new one tomorrow because I think it'll be quite a busy day. So thank you so much everyone for watching and I'll see you in the next one on a Himalayan at the start of the adventure. Mm -hmm.